G'day everybody, I'm Mark here again. Um, I just want to do an update on the gun buyback. Gun bans, uh, basically the new regulations or the new set of rules that the police minister and the police department are putting together and putting forward to parliament. parliament. Um, as most people know, there was a paper put forward and um, tabled or put into before parliament. Um, in Western Australia. Um, that is, uh, I'll put a link to that whole paper down here, but that was put forward by um, Minister Papalia, who's the police minister. Um, and that was put forward. It has now gone through another stage. I think from what I gather, there's some amendments being made and it's gone to another stage. There's several stages it's got to go, it has to go through before it actually gets turned into law. At this stage, it's not law. Um, but I suppose I want to tell you a little bit about what's going on. Um, to start off with, for those that people that don't know, our state is, has a majority government of the Labor government. The Labor government tends to be more left, um, well it is the more left of our government, so of our, oh, we have a Labor government and a Liberal government. Um, the Liberals, the Conservative, the right and the Labor's the, the left. Um, I wouldn't say there's a lot of difference in this situation in what we're looking at here in all the, the conversations that are happening in Parliament in the restrictions or people who are trying are talking against this the Liberal Party is not talking against this at all so they see the um, gun restrictions which is one of the big things here but basically getting guns off the streets for your personal safety um, is the selling point to go with these new these new laws these new regulations um, and the Liberal Party are just as much, or our conservative side of our state government is just as much on that side as well. They're not, they're not saying boo about it, they're not resisting it at all. Um, so independents are, there's other things, there's the Shooters and Fishers Party, there's the National Party, there's the no doubt One, One Nation, that sort of thing. Lots of people who are against this and more, I suppose, what you'd call on the, the Second Amendment sort of idea, but much more logical way of looking at things. Um, but outside the politics, what I want to say is that that has progressed, but it is, um, I suppose there's other things going on as well that you should know. The, the, the point of saying it's a majority government means that they can sort of just do things and railroad them through a fair bit, which they have been doing. But there is an election coming up early next year. Um, and they care about their votes as much as anybody else. So there is, there is some, I suppose, a couple of things. We have the, um, the West Australian um, fire community or firearms community alliance, which are in there bring up a lot of good things to say, you know, that why this is a silly set of rules. So they're sort of doing their fight on that side of things. Um, and I think there's a fair bit of the firearms community that are putting a fair bit of um, hope or faith into what they can do. I think they're doing a great job. I don't know how much that can do at the end of the day because, and I'll come back to this, this is largely about votes is what we're actually talking about. Yes, there's lots of other agendas and all sorts of other things going on, but largely this is about votes. Politicians, by and large, are greedy for votes more than anything else. That's what they need to get back in. That's what they need to get their perks. That's what they need to get everything. And they need to be sitting on Parliament, they need to have their seat, so they need votes to get back to that place. So even though they can push things through now because of the majority of that government, um, the fear of votes is still a very powerful thing that the people have. And I suppose part of the other side of the story that people around the world should understand is it is a very, um, well, it's for, for a lot of the shooters, for a lot of us um, to be in this situation, and this situation means we are fully registered. All our firearms have been registered. Those, those walls have already tumbled. That happened a long time ago. That's part of the Australian story. It's not necessarily a good thing, but there's to the majority of Australians, it's a good thing. And I want to keep people keep in mind, if you're just talking a gun conversation, the majority of Australians are fairly close to anti-guns. It's a minority, maybe it's the smarter minority, that aren't anti. But there is. There's a lot of propaganda for that reason, a massive amount of propaganda we've been through, even to where you'd find there's a decent portion of Australians that don't even think there are guns in Australia. Um, anyway, move forward from that. Um, just because everyone, the, all those other four guys over there might think that doesn't mean I do, and do understand that the, the gun community in Western Australia is just as passionate as they are anywhere in this world. 
But with that in mind, there's been a lot of propaganda. And what we are all receiving as licensed legal gun owners, whether you've got one gun or you've got 20 guns or whatever you've got, we are all getting texts, personal texts from the police department. I'll put up three texts that we've had here over the last um, three months. Texts which are prompting to go forward with this with a buyback. It's a it's a voluntary um, um, handy handy firearm in. So it's a voluntary confisca confiscation. Um, there is ridiculously small amounts of money, which I'll put that as well as to what that is, which they're offering for firearms. Um, and listen, a little bit disheartening, but a little bit understandable. There's people who are using that. They're putting firearms in. Um, they, some are taking a piece of rubbish firearm that you can't get any money for and you can get the best money you could possibly get. Uh, they're getting it out of putting it to, to hand it into the police. That's, that's twice what they'd get from otherwise. But the majority of you look at those figures there of the majority of firearms that the police are actually targeting and uh, would, would like handed in, whether uh, in the, the numbers beyond I suppose I should explain that. They are suggesting in these laws that there will be five guns. Um, you can have five competition guns and you can fi have five open license guns or genuine need guns, uh, which means you can use them in hunting and recreation, that sort of stuff. And there's five competition guns, two different ways we can do our licenses. Um, that for the, the, that community is that the want it, that are a bit anti-gun, they see that as all you'd ever need. For a real enthusiast, uh, for a real competition guy, that's nowhere near what you need to do what you're doing. And for a real enthusiast and for a real competition guy, when you're offering $600 for a gun, it doesn't pay for you know half or one quarter or one tenth or you know it is an absurdly small amount of money. The other thing, if you read those texts, they're actually clearly saying they've only got X amount of money and it's first in, first served. And if you're too late, then it doesn't matter. You're going to have to hand them in when the rules come in anyway. So it is, yes, unconstitutional um, in various fashions. It's borderline on theft or bullying in other fashions. Um, but you can see what they're actually up to here. Now, what I want to point out here is those that is not law. And I find it highly unlikely it to get to law. But I still understand some of the processes that are happening there. As much of it is fear of being found, being breaking the law, or the other side of things is if it actually goes through and all that money, which they've got $64 million they can spend. I don't know why it is they automatically get $64 million that hasn't actually been voted through and isn't actually what the people decided, but they have got that, uh, which is a pittance compared to what they need. But I presume there's people that have the fear of, if I'm going to get any money for this, I've got to do it earlier rather than later because otherwise we'll run out of money. I would look at it, um, I, I understand it, I, I, I sort of sympathise with the situation, but, and it is not as simple as um, just don't comply. Our, where our stuff is fully registered. Um, there isn't any question. They have our personal text, let alone everything else. They can contact us in all sorts of different fashions. They know our address, they know the bits and pieces. If you do not comply, when it's come law and it's gone past all the dates, for us in Western Australia, they'll come and take all your guns. and put a criminal charge to you. It is very serious. The full force of the law, right down to the full force of the law, is the sort of tactics which is which they have clearly stated they'd go to in previous situations. So it's not a simple thing to not comply. The real simple way to do this is to turn it back into what really makes sense. In Well, in my opinion, what really makes sense. This is civil servants, or in this case, the enforcers of the law that are writing the law. The police department, now I don't want to pick on police officers. There's police officers that have reached out to us with, listen, this is not what we want either. Um, there's police officers that are leaving the force because of the toxic nature, toxic relationship or toxic um, environment of the police department. There's a lot of police officers that don't want to be there. I'm not saying all of them, but there's a lot that are really struggling with this as well. This is the heads of the police department and this is the minister. They're doing this for, you know, there's some that uh, on their ego trip or on their, 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 they want to you know, run their little area and they don't think you should have guns. There's certainly some of those people there. And you could mention some of the hierarchy like that. There's some that are doing it and like the police minister and like the WA government, they see it as a votes winner. And I would say very clearly, if you want to stand up as a gun guy and say, listen, you shouldn't do it because you can't take our guns. I understand you. A gun community understands you. The majority of people really don't. 
They don't see it that way. You're just a gun guy that wants to keep your guns. Go figure, they know that. They don't want you to have guns. So, and I would say when you look at things on that side of it, it's a perfectly understandable thing given the fact these people have been sucked into that propaganda. They don't understand the things you understand. But you have a far more powerful tool. If you stop looking at the fact they're taking my guns away and go the way they're taking my rights away and realise all the other West Australians that are getting their rights taken away from them. Been through it lots of times, but what they're doing with the fisheries, what they're doing with the beaches, what they're doing with the national parks, what they're doing with, against the four-wheel drivers, against the farmers, against the fishers, against the nature park walkers, and then you go into whether it's our schools or you go into uh, other parts of education system or you go into some of the way the laws have been written you realize that in actual fact all over our state all over this process there is a lot of people getting their rights taken away and if you get together with those people have the conversation and realize that you're not talking about taking guns away you're talking about taking rights away you're talking about the civil servants acting as the elite acting as the ruling class and that's not okay. They all get there. You know, there are a lot of unelected people that are doing this, but the people who can change that are the elected people. And we, supposedly anyway, in a democracy, we elect the people. My thoughts are the, the way to really resist this attack this is basically to get on board as to the fact that we're all in the same boat and we've got to get together as the same boat. We've got to do some form or other, and I'll leave that up to you, but we've got to do some form or other of making sure that we're out there to be seen, but make sure we get some power back to what's going to happen voting-wise. And when we are voting, stop, stop doing the two-party system. Stop going for one side or the other side. Go with the independents. Go with the people who look after you. Go with the people that have your rights in their sites. And I'm saying both sides don't have your, your, your um, rights in their mind. They have votes in their mind and they really don't care. I think we're in the time of this world where the two-party system is broken, it's, it's collapsed, it's had it. We turn it back into the independent um, parliamentarian that is there for their reason for that they've got voting for this and that's what they're gonna stand for. And then they are doing things for the people. And they're only gonna stay there if they're doing things for the people who elected them in there. We get back to that place there and we can start to regain things. Go right through and you know, drain the swamp, that sort of stuff. We put enough power in those places there, then they don't have the leverage anymore. And I think that's where we should be going. For this moment, what we, what we have to do really comes down to the people. We still have the power, but most people have been um, bullied, intimidated, silenced, propagandized into a place where they're not actually communicating. Um, and what we do tend to get stuck on is the semantics. Lots of people discussing what regulation should happen, whether this should be five guns or it should be 10 guns or whether we should be able to do this or should be able to do that, that sort of stuff. These are proposals that were put forward by the police minister and the heads of the police department. A couple of individuals actually put together this little thing here to go through and do this. Why on earth would we let those people make decisions for us? That's not a democracy. It's not how it's supposed to happen. I think the whole lot should be thrown out uh, we should take the forward step. The people should say, okay, listen, we can see some things to rewrite that sort of stuff. Let's sit down with a proper group of people and work out those rules to make sense for all of us. But like I said, that must be done as the people and we've got to understand, get back together as the people and, and stand up as the people. Anyway, that got a little bit political down that road there um, to, to, for the people who don't know what's going on and are getting texts and concerned. Listen, don't be concerned any more than the fact that everyone's getting those. That is the nature of what they're up to. Um, the, the gunsmiths and all the other licenses, so gunsmithing and, um, and manufacturing and the dealer licenses and all the other licenses are getting pressure in other things and giving other bits and pieces down the same road. They are on a path like it, the rules are going to go through, but this is a little bit of a tactic also. If we can just set up where these rules are going to go through, we can try and make it happen anyway, they haven't gone through yet. And we the people still have power if we want to grasp it. Anyway guys, that's my video. I'm sorry if they're a bit long or a bit political, but that's where we sit at this second. Um, hope you enjoyed. Leave a comment below. Um, thanks for checking in and we'll catch you next time.